Welcome everyone for this uh, last uh, video in our Getting Started with OpenFast series. So, what did we uh, do last time? Uh, we modeled a fixed wind turbine with a controller uh, and it was undergoing an homogeneous wind which was ramped from 10 to 14 meters per second. For the turbine, which is the 5 megawatt aerial turbine, we used the reference controller um, but uh, we also explained that you can use uh, Roscoe if you want to design your own controller for your turbine. And thanks to the use of Servodyne, we could uh, have power generation information and we could, we could model the, um, the generator in the turbine. So now that we uh, modeled the, a proper wind turbine on land, uh, we will uh, do a floating wind turbine today. So. We will model this floating wind turbine in a moderate sea and it will un undergo a turbulent wind. So we will also talk about how uh, we can generate a turbulent wind. For the platform for this turbine, we will use the OC4 reference semi-submersible uh, platform. Uh, we will need additional modules to our OpenFast um, uh, software. So for now, we've used the Elastodyne for the structure. We've used Aerodyne for the aerodynamic loads and inflow wind to model the incoming wind. And we use Servodyne for the uh, generator and the control system. Today, we want to add some hydrodynamic loads to the platform. So we will use Hydrodyne for this. And Hydrodyne will take care of both the waves and the hydrodynamic loads. Uh, while it's uh, split into modules uh, for Aerodyne and inflow wind, in Hydrodyne, it takes care of both. But uh, in the future, uh, NRL uh, plans to develop a new module for just the waves and the currents. And because we don't want the platform to drift away, uh, we will model uh, some mooring lines and we will do this with uh, Moordyne. But you could, uh, you could use other modules as well, but today we will use Moordyne. So before we start simulating, let's have a look at um, hydrodynamic theory. So basically when um, when the body is in the water, it can undergo all of these forces. So uh, there is the hydrostatic stiffness, the fruit creative forces, the radiation force, drag force, and also the mooring forces. Um, but we don't have to compute uh, all of the all these forces for each body, because um, if we look at the kilogram carpenter number, which uh, compares the body uh, dimension to the um, to the wavelengths uh, of the of the waves. Uh, we can see that um, some forces will dominate over the other. So for large member, uh, we will mostly have the inertial forces, so in the Fulcrilov and radiation term. And for the smaller members, we will have more of the drag uh, forces. So depending on the dim dimension of uh, each part of the platform, we will use one or the other theory to compute the hydrodynamic loads. For the three main uh, pontoons, here on the OC4 platform, um, we will use the potential theory. And for this, we need to pre-compute the hydrodynamic uh, database for these um, pontoons. Uh, so for this, we will use a preprocessor. Um, here, uh, NRL uh, used the WAMIT preprocessor to get the database, but uh, it can, can also be uh, other like uh, NEMO, which is developed at, in uh, Central Nantes, for example. And for the smallest member, we need to provide um, some uh, drag coefficients uh, to compute the hydrodynamic loads. And now uh, hydrodyne uh, will also model the waves. So to model the wave, we can have either regular waves uh, like this, like uh, sinus uh, waves, uh, but we can also have um, irregular waves, which are a summation of um, a series of uh, sine and cosine waves, as you can see here. And if you look at the spectrum of uh, this uh, series, we can have a spectrum like this. So this one is a John Swap spectrum, which is widely used. So we can provide the input waves in the form either of a regular wave or a John Swap spectrum. We could also have like white noise, uh, white noise spectrum or other. And um, we need to compute uh, first and second order waves. If we only use the first order waves, we may miss some of the crest and drop. So that's it for hydrogen theory. And now we will have a look at the input files for the simulation. So here we are in our uh, home folder for this simulation. We still have all the files that we used uh, previously. And now we also have the Hydrodyne file. 
and the modine file. So let's first have a look at the hydrodyne file. So here we have um, we can specify some environmental conditions, but we leave it to default, so it will use the one defined in the FST file. Then we have all the inf information about the waves simulation. So here we use the John Swift spectrum, which is centered on uh, this uh, wave period. Um, then we can have some current, but here we will not put uh, any current. And then we need to specify how we want to compute the hydrodynamic loads on the floating platform. And as we said, uh, we need some hydrodynamic database uh, for the large members of the platform. So we will refer to this file, uh, to this folder, where the um, hydrodynamic will look for the hydrodynamic database. So we, we can see it. We can see it here. Uh, we have the dat database that was uh, computed by uh, NREL using uh, WAMIT. Now for the uh, more recent coefficients, uh, we need to specify all the members uh, where we will have some uh, drag. So this is a bit tedious for this platform because it's really big. Um, but every time you need to specify the joints, so the points and um, the member that are linking the joints to one another, so it's a bit tedious, but uh, we don't have to do it again because it was already done for this platform. But if you want to design your own platform, you have to do it uh, yourself. Uh, we have also some field members, uh, like with the ballast, for example. Um, and then yeah, we'll fast forward to the output uh, part. So here we want to output the wave elevation time series and the forces and moments computed on the platform. So that's it for our Azurdyne uh, file. And now for the Modine file, it's quite uh, more simple. So here for the Modine file, we just need to specify where we want to put some anchors and uh, the types of the anchors. So for example, their mass, uh, their length, and uh, their stiffness. And that's it for the Mordine. So now we are all set, and uh, we can start the simulation. But we the last thing that we need to do is to add some turbulent wind, uh, which I, I have not talked about uh, until now. So um, if you, we, we want some turbulent wind, we need to pre-process pre it as well, because um, OpenFast will not uh, generate turbulent wind uh, by itself. Uh, but luckily, NREL has provided us with um, a turbulent wind preprocessor, uh, which is called TurbSim. So I have installed it here. Uh, it's the same process as getting the OpenFast executable. So in the same uh, page where I got the OpenFast executable, I got the TurbSim executable. And now I will run TurbSim. So I will show you how to run TurbSim. So I need some input file for TurbSim. So this is the, the form of the input file. It's um, .inp file, but .dat will work as well. So this is the TurbSim file. And this file, um, I can specify the mean velocity that I want and the reference height at which I want to have this velocity. And then I will specify the grid in which I want to discretize the wind speed in order to have a fully turbulent uh, wind speed. I can specify the time step, the total time, and other parameters. But the most important are this one, so the mean speed and the, the grid discretization. And then uh, I will uh, launch TurbSim. So it's the same as uh, launching OpenFast. Uh, I, I need to call the executable file and the input file. So I will do it in a terminal. I have my terminal window open. First, I will call for my TurbSim executable. And then I will call for the input file. And TurbSim is starting. OK, so now uh, TurbSim just finished running. Um, and what I, I suggest is that we go and look at uh, the field, turbulent field that we just generated. So to do that, um, I have uh, 
Python scripts. Okay, so here my code just ran and we can see the turbulent uh, field. So you can see that uh, as we can expect um, on the lowest altitude, so this is the, um, the vertical uh, distance and this is the horizontal distance and the turbine will be in this plane. So you can see that uh, at the lowest uh, altitude, it's uh, the smallest wind uh, in mean wind speed. And at higher altitude, we have higher wind speeds. So we can see the atmospheric boundary layer here. And you can see that uh, it's varying uh, quite a lot. So we have some turbulent wind uh, and the mean speed of the wind is around uh, 12 meter per second. So we can use this field for, the, for our simulation. So there are a few more settings that we need to set. So first, um, I have uh, I want to use the turbulent wind field wind field that I generated. So I will go to inflow wind. I will specify that I want to use this uh, wind field. So I'm using uh, wind type three. So it's a binary turbsim full field, and I have it in input data and turb twelve uh, meters per second dot PTS. So that's good. This is the wind field that we want to use. Uh, next, uh, there is something else I need to do. Um, if you rem remember well, before in Elastodyne, we didn't have any degrees of freedom for the platform because we wanted the platform to uh, not move because it was fixed on the ground. But now that we have the floating platform, we will enable all the um, degrees of freedom. So that this is what we did here. So now the platform can move, but it will be uh, held back by the mooring and the hydrodynamic forces. So that's good. And last thing that we want to do is go to the FST file and enable the modules for the hydrodynamic uh, loads. So we already had all these modules enabled, and now we will add the hydrodyne module and the Moordyne module. And we need to specify uh, to tell OpenFast where to look for these modules, uh, configuration files. That's good. And now we can start the simulation that now that we have everything. So again, I'm using a terminal window. By the way, you can also launch the simulation from Python using the OpenFast toolbox. So it can be helpful sometimes if you want to launch many simulation in an automatic way. So I am calling for my OpenFast executable and for the main input file, and I'm launching the simulation. So it will take some time to load the TurbSim file and the, to generate the hydrogen waves. OK, so uh, our simulation just finished. And uh, we so can, like last time, have we are using the output. Um, OpenFast Toolbox to process the output of the simulation. So uh, we can uh, first have a look at the first figure. We can check the wave elevation. So we can see that we have um, waves on average like one meter high, but we have uh, some really high waves sometimes uh, up to three meters high. So that's it's, uh, looks like a normal sea state. We can also look at the, the wind. So here the wind is varying a lot, uh, but it has a, an average around 12 meters per second. And we can see it sometimes goes like really low and sometimes uh, much higher. So we have a, a turbulent wind. So first we can look at the platform motion when, with, uh, with this condition. So first the surge uh, motion. Uh, so we start at zero and we can see that with the forces acting on the turbine, the platform drifts some 10 meters uh, away in the downwind direction, but then the, the brewing lines uh, will stop the drifting. So that's the uh, first thing that we, we can look. We could also have a look at the moving line, moving line forces, but we, we won't here. But we, we could show that they are pulling the turbine back. Uh, here we have the eave motion of the turbine. So it's moving uh, mainly because of the waves. It's moving in the eave direction. And we can also um, have a look at the pitching motion. So it's a really important motion for the wind turbine. Um, and we can see that it's pitching um, 
some a few degrees uh, from zero to six degrees, so that's already a pretty large uh, pitching motion. Uh, okay, so we just looked at the platform uh, motion, and we could can also have a look at the um, control properties and the power generation of the turbine. So here we'll display the generator power, blade pitch, and rotor speed. So first we can look at the blade pitch. So if you were at the beginning of the simulation, the rotor is accelerating, so we don't pitch the blade too much. But once we want to control the, to limit the incoming power to the turbine, we will start pitching the blades. So you can see that the, the blades are pitched like up to 10 degrees in this example. Um, we can have a look at the rotor speed. So first it accelerates and then it's, um, it's staying around the 12 meter per second. So it's, it's a nominal value. And lastly, uh, the power generation. And we can see that the turbine does a good job at um, generating uh, 5,000 uh, kilowatts, uh, 5 megawatts, and uh, not too much. Sometimes it goes uh, beyond that, uh, but because the, the wind is uh, slowing down as well. Um, but uh, here you can start to see that the controller is doing a pretty good job. And you can also try to change the controller and see uh, how it affects the power generation of the turbine. So we won't uh, dive more into the results. Uh, there is a lot to say about uh, all the results from this, this simulation, but we won't dive too much, but feel free to um, look at it for yourself. Okay, um, so now if you want to go further with your use of OpenFast, here are a few ideas of where you might want to look for ideas or information. So first you can check the artist folder so it's a regression test uh, that are designed for OpenFast, but it's also a great way to see all the capabilities of OpenFast that has been implemented. So you can find this one on uh, NREL's GitHub. Uh, another good thing to explore is the OpenFast examples, uh, or the examples for the OpenFast toolbox. So when developing the uh, Python OpenFast toolbox, uh, the developers uh, provide a lot of examples of uh, what you can do with the toolbox. It's, a, it's also good examples of what you can do with OpenFast. Uh, feel free to explore the NROL forum. Uh, there are many answers to the questions that you might ask on the forum, and also uh, you can discover new uh, use or new capabilities of the software. If you want to dive more into the control, uh, have a look at the Roscoe uh, controller. Um, it's not only a controller, but it's also a framework to tune controller for your own turbine, so it's really helpful. And lastly, uh, feel free to check the fast farm. So it's um, an extension of OpenFast uh, to use to model um, several turbines in the same uh, farm uh, with interaction between the turbines. So it's really interesting as well. So this is just a few ideas uh, and feel free to explore this uh, very uh, resourceful uh, software. Um, and for me, that's the end. So thank you for uh, watching. And uh, feel free to send me an email if you have uh, questions or if you want more information about what I said. Thank you very much.